Uh, my role on the panel today is to talk about technology, uh, and in particular, uh, artificial intelligence and robo-advisors. And uh, this really boils down to two points. Uh, we, we're going to talk about the digital client experience and the disruptive effect this may have on financial services. So can new technology disrupt an entire industry? You betcha, absolutely. Uh, show of hands, how many of you in the room have been to a Blockbuster video lately? <laughs> no one? Uh, well, there's a very obvious reason for that. That is uh, Netflix ran Blockbuster out of business single-handedly because consumers realized that digital delivery was faster, less expensive, and more expedient. And that technology uh, is creeping into our industry. Uh, so in the post-pandemic world, uh, we're seeing a resurgence in the home office. Uh, certainly face-to-face -face meetings have not gone away. Uh, but what has changed is five years ago, if you met with your financial planner, pretty much guaranteed you met face-to-face. -face. Uh, now, what we're seeing in the field is advisors are just as likely, if not more likely, uh, to meet with their clients online. And that's where the digital client experience comes into play. Um, I have colleagues in the tax industry uh, that became remote tax preparers overnight. They did dozens and dozens of returns for people they're never going to meet. They're never going to see these people. And uh, financial planners are having the same experience. They're doing business remotely. You may never see your client face to face. You may never shake their hand. And that is why the website suddenly becomes critical. Uh, when websites first came out, oh, you know, that's nice to have. That, that's interesting. We have a website. And then uh, down the road, people began to realize, hey, this is a really powerful marketing tool. Uh, in fact, we can do business uh, on our website. We can get into e-commerce. Uh, going forward, uh, I think the digital experience is going to be critical. It's going to be essential. It's going to be necessary because your website is not just an add-on. It may be your first last and only opportunity to interact with a prospective client. And that brings us to the idea of the personal client financial portal. Understanding that you're not going to see your client in person, you now need the ability to present complex financial information online. Okay, you need the ability to provide your clients with their information at their fingertips all in one place. Uh, so this is why we're really seeing companies like eMoney Advisor, Money Guide Pro, really take hold. Uh, now I'm cognizant of the fact that those companies have been around for well over 25 years. Uh, not to date myself, I have been using the technology for that long. <laughs> uh, but again, when you're not going to see your client in person, that's not an option anymore. That software is essential. Uh, so which brings us to robo-advisors. Uh, since we're now not meeting face-to-face, -face, we're meeting people on screens, uh, suddenly we have an opportunity for artificial intelligence to step in and be the advisor. Uh, I could talk about this for hours, but I won't. Uh, I, I will just say that the technology has reached a point where it's very difficult to tell at first glance if you're talking to a human being or if you're talking uh, to an AI program. Uh, so artificial intelligence does have its advantages um, computer programs do not have kids to feed. They don't have mortgages. <laughs> they don't have car payments to worry about. So whereas a human advisor says, hey, you know, I can only work with you if your account is at least $100,000 or maybe more established advisors and they might say, oh, I, I need a million dollars under management just to work with you. Uh, a robo-advisor can work with you if your account is $10. $10 to get in front of a robo-advisor. Uh, so they're certainly more cost effective, uh, certainly more uh, efficient. They're more available. You can meet with a robo advisor every night. If your finances, if the bear market is keeping you up at night, you can log on to meet with your robo advisor. Can't do that with a human being. Uh, so the availability and the cost are certainly advantages. Uh, some of the disadvantages, uh, robo advisors only know what you tell them. Uh, I happen to be a chess player. 
Uh, computerized chest engines uh, have been in development for over 40 years. And uh, they only know what you tell them. And, and the same is going to be true of robo-advisors. Uh, to date, we have not seen robo-advisors outperforming human advisors. Why? Because it was the human advisors that taught the robo-advisors how to trade. Uh, so are robo-advisors quicker? Yes. More efficient? Perhaps. Are they better? Not yet. And uh, clients, uh, being social creatures, they want and need human interaction. Uh, a computer cannot yet explain to a client why your stock portfolio is down 20%. And they can't say with conviction in the middle of a bear market, everything's going to be okay. Uh, so human beings being irrational creatures, uh, you, still, you still need something with some kind of emotional intelligence uh, to, to deal with those human emotions because they're, they're never going away. They're always going to be part of the industry. Uh, so, so where do we stand going forward? Uh, what are the next 50 years going to be like? Uh, I don't think human advisors will go away anytime soon for the reasons I just stated. Uh, however, I don't know how much longer our advisors, our students are going to be able to function without the assistance of robo advisors. Uh, so over the next certainly 10 years, possibly 20 years, uh, I think we'll see a symbiosis, a sort of collaborative relationship where robo-advisors are not perhaps doing all the work, but they are certainly part of the platform, uh, both for the major brokerage houses, which frankly are already using robo-advisors. As of 2022, robo-advisors have 1.3 trillion under management. To put that in perspective, that's how much revenue the U.S. government collects in taxes every year. Uh, so we're talking about a chunk of change. Over the next five years, robo-advisors are expected to have three trillion. Uh, so I don't think robo-advisors are going away and they're not coming. Robo-advisors are here. And so uh, in the end, I, I think where this is going is they're going to enhance the advisor, uh, hopefully make them better and certainly more available for our clients.